All right, step one is to go to autodraw.com. Once you are there, make sure that you like the size of your paper. If you wanna make it a little bit wider, you can just click on this little gray triangle at the bottom and drag it and it will extend the size of your paper. Um, I don't need mine to be anything more than a square today, so I'm going to leave it about this size. First thing I'm gonna do is change the color because we're making a color wheel. I don't want it to be blue. I wanna have a black outline on everything so it doesn't get confused with the rest of the colors. Um, and then we're going to actually click here where it says shape on the left side. Up at the top, you'll see the three shape options. I want you to click on a triangle and just draw a triangle. Don't draw it too big because you're going to want to have room for about six of these to fit together. We're going to form a hexagon. So clicking on the tool at the very, very top up here, the select tool, it looks like a plus sign with arrows. Click on that, you can drag your triangle anywhere over. I'm gonna leave it here in the center. And then you're gonna right click, oops, it's gotta be a way to cut. Oh yeah, on your computer. So you're gonna hit the control and the letter C, those um, keys on your keyboard, hit them at the same time. It will copy that triangle and then control and V, not P for some reason, but V will paste it and now you have two of them. So what I'm going to do is kind of line it up exactly underneath the first one. Take this top circle and drag. And when you drag it, you should be able to make it almost exactly upside down. Um, I'm going to use the arrow key on my keyboard to just tap it down a little bit because I didn't want to use my mouse. That's perfect. And actually, I'm realizing these are upside down. This guy is supposed to be on top like that. So what I'm going to do is just drag this one down. You want to kind of form like an hourglass, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but you can see I'm clicking on and off of it to kind of eyeball where it belongs. So our original triangle is still on our um, clipboard. If you hit Control V again, it's going to paste another one. Grab it. Oops, grab it. Bring it over here to the side and take that circle at the top and turn. And what we're basically going to do here is we're going to try to fit them in perfectly. You're going to have three on the top and three on the bottom. All right. You can kind of wiggle it around until it gets into the place where you like it. Hit control V again. This one should just slide right into place. I am doing pretty good on making these look nice. A trick here is you can drag and copy just these two triangles on the side. So what I did was I dragged and I made sure that this rectangle only highlights the two corners on the outside edge. That's gonna select both of these triangles, which happen to be the perfect size for the other half of my hexagon. So hit Control C on your keyboard, Control V to paste it, and drag those two new triangles over to the side. Voila, perfect project done. I'm just kidding, it's not done at all. We still have to finish the color wheel. So click on your fill tool over here on the left side. It's the one that looks like a bucket. And let's change to a new color. Now you can pick any color you wanna start with. I'm gonna start with red. And boom, red at the top. What color comes next in a color wheel? Orange. And then yellow. And then green. And then blue. And finally, purple. Okay. So there's my color wheel, pretty solid. If you're at this point, all you need to do now is hit the T for type, type in the word primary, change it to the color black. You can keep it in that font if you want to, play around with a new font, totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna stick with it, but I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. I'm gonna go to like an 18. Oop, just getting 24, because it's really hard to, to grab it when it's that size. Click the select tool again and control C to copy it, control V to paste it. And I want you to put primary in all of the primary color triangles. That's going to be red, yellow, and blue. All right. If you don't like the shades that you got here by using the basic colors that they give you, you can click through um, and you can see different colors, but be cautious if you're adding in tertiaries. Um, you may not want to do this yet. You might want to wait till the very end. Um, so, whoops. Clicking on the yellow because I don't like that yellow too much. There we go. All right. Now, let's say you want to go a little bit more interesting and you want to add in your tertiary colors. We have primary. We have secondary. We need those colors that go in between. 
So click on your shape. Oop, first, make sure that you're in black. All right. Oop, that's a dark brown, isn't it? There we go. Click on shape, and you can pick a square or a circle. I'm going to go with circle because I think it looks nice. Drag it to about a size that you enjoy. Click the select icon and arrange it so that it's overlapping two colors, a primary and a secondary. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and do that on every corner where the two colors intersect. They definitely don't have to be even or perfect by any means. There we go. All right, now you're gonna go to that fill tool Click a new color, and now you have to fill in your tertiaries. We know that tertiary colors are mixtures between colors. So, for example, if I were to start down here at the yellow and the green, if we mix those two together, we're going to get a lime green, um, which I think is really easy to find on auto draw. So, that's why I'm starting there. Even when you click it to fill it in, it's pretty apparent that color belongs there. Your eyes can make the connection between green, lime green, and yellow. Um, if you find that you don't like that shade, kind of click around so you find the shade that you appreciate or would prefer there. But you're gonna fill all of those tertiary colors in the same way. So blue and green is gonna make a teal or a turquoise. We have a lot of different options for that here. Click the one that looks nicest to you. Blue and purple together is going to make blurple or indigo. Purple and red makes a bit of a pink color. Um, now, this is a true pink. You can use that one if you want to. Um, you can also do this dark reddish color. You know, it's going to be totally up to you on that one because it doesn't make this kind of pink when you actually mix it together, but it's pretty close. Um, red orange, orange, as they say, and then a yellow orange. So this is where you might want to go through and be like, wow, this red looks a lot like this red orange and this orange looks a lot like this yellow orange. Maybe I need to adjust some colors. Um, it's gonna be tricky. If you make the red really dark, that kind of helps. I wish that I had a more neon -y yellow that we could use, but I will know what your intentions are. Um, so don't fret. Oh gosh, not that color. So undo, by the way, is down here at the bottom. But that does look good there. So yeah, use your best judgment, fill in your color wheel completely. Let's see. Uh, I was hoping I could find a different orange for my color wheel, but it's not looking great. So we'll just stop here. Um, what you can do next is go up to the very top. You have two choices here. You can download the file. If you do that, as you can see, it's gonna actually download it to your Chromebook, and then you can upload the file into your Google Classroom or hit share. And what you're going to get here is a link. So down here at the bottom, you can see copy link. Once you've copied that, you can paste that link into Google Classroom. Either way works. If you wanted to put your name on your artwork, make sure that you're over here in the text and you can write your name. Voila. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on color wheels in AutoDraw.